Each impeller diaphragm contains one eye seal and one shaft seal. These seals are designed to minimize leakage from the diffuser to the inlet of the impeller and to the inlet of the next stage. And two stage seals are usually manufactured of aluminum to ensure that contact with the rotor does not result in an external excitation to cause vibration. However, certain gases and saturated gas mixtures require that alternative materials be used. Various abradable material interstage seals are also used. Abradable seals allow for contact with the rotor without causing excitation to the rotor system. This type of interstage sealing system had its origin in the aircraft engine industry. The advantage of an abradable seal is increased efficiency. Increases in stage efficiency as high as 3% have been obtained. Frequently used abradable seal materials are fluorescent and honeycomb arrangements of Hastelloy. The temperature limits of these materials are 350 degrees Fahrenheit and 1100 degrees Fahrenheit. Usually, the labyrinth, which looks like knife edges as highlighted here, are positioned on the rotors whenever abradable seals are used. It has proven cost-effective not to attempt to machine knife edges in the abradable material. One note of caution regarding fluorescent labyrinths is that they should be pressure balanced. Pressure balancing of each interstage labyrinth ensures that the high pressure side of the seal, so here for the eye seal and for the shaft seal, these high pressure sides will not deflect or force the material into the rotor surface. The lack of pressure balance will result in wear of labyrinth seals. Pressure balance is easily achieved by ensuring that the pressure behind the seals, as seen here, is less than or equal to the pressure between the labyrinth surface and rotor surface. Deterioration of labyrinth seals in a centrifugal compressor is one of the major causes of reduced performance. The eye seal is affected to a much greater extent than the shaft seal, since the dp across this seal is greater. Now, the causes of labyrinth seal wear are rotor vibration, excessive moisture, and fouling. What I want you to understand and to remember at this level is that if your centrifugal compressor head and efficiency fall off greater than 10%, then your compressor should be inspected at the next opportunity, if the compressor is known not to be fouled. Because simply, a 10% drop in compressor head and efficiency, with no evidence of fouling, means that your stage seals are not performing their duties, and you need to check that as soon as you can. In this cut section of a typical multi-stage vertically split centrifugal compressor, the shaft and seals are located here. Compressor shaft and seals perform the function of containing the process fluid by minimizing external leakage and directing the leakage to a safe location. The types of shaft and seals used in compressor applications are shown in the following table. With the exception of labyrinth seals used for inert gas services, all compressor seals are configured as double seals. In other words, the sealing fluid is supplied at a pressure greater than the process fluid and therefore requires a seal between the process and the sealing fluid and between atmosphere and the sealing fluid. 
In the next couple of videos, we will examine in details the major types of mechanical seals used for centrifugal compressors, labyrinth seals, restrictive ring seals, liquid film floating ring seals, liquid film cone seals, and dry gas seals. The most common type of compressor seal is the labyrinth seal. It is most prevalent on air compressors and some gas applications. The sealing action is achieved by means of labyrinth teeth. These teeth restrict the flow of gas. The teeth do not touch the shaft but maintains a close clearance. They are made of soft metal so that the shaft is not damaged on accidental contact. They are also sharp so that friction generated by any accidental contact is very small. The space between the teeth form a labyrinth passage. Let's assume now in our example that the process side, so the gas to be sealed, is on this side and that the atmospheric side is located here. Now, as depicted in this example, when the process gas enters the space in between the teeth, it slows down and changes direction. The resulting turbulence created restricts the flow of gas. However, if the gas velocity is very high, some of the gas does not change direction in a simple labyrinth seal and passes in a straight line between the teeth and the shaft as depicted here. In such cases, an interlocking labyrinth seal can be used. As shown in this example, the shaft also has teeth which interlock with the teeth of the seal, thus preventing flow of gas in a straight line. In many process applications, you will find arrangements employing both simple and interlocking labyrinth seals as it is the case for the following example. Here you can see the simple labyrinth seal and here the interlocking labyrinth seal. Keep in mind though that labyrinth seals do not completely prevent leakage. They are widely used as interstage seals. In such cases, the pressure differential required across the stage is small enough for the labyrinth seal to be effective. Now, take a look at the following simple labyrinth seal. The left side is the process side, so the gas to be sealed. And on the right side, the atmosphere. You can see in this example that the labyrinth is divided into several sections. The first section is the packing. It is exposed to process pressure. A port or lantern is used to bleed off gas after the first section. This port is connected to the compressor intake. Another port can be used to inject another gas at a slightly higher pressure than intake pressure. This prevents the process gas leakage but results in the injected gas to leak both to atmosphere and intake as depicted here. Now, the operation can be reversed and the port can be connected to an ejector. This results in a pressure which is lower than atmospheric. Therefore, the main gas and atmospheric air will leak into the port and will be removed, as depicted here. So as you can see here, 
the flexibility of operation of labyrinth seals allows the seal to be used in many gas applications. In this video, we will discuss the shaft and restrictive ring seals. Let's have a closer look. Shown here is a 3D model representation of a typical restrictive ring seal with its packing rings and packing caps. The shaft packing is always of the floating type and consists of several annular packing caps and segmental packing rings. In this example, you can see two packing caps and four packing rings. This arrangement is held inside the compressor as a complete assembly, using the appropriate studs and nuts that secure the assembly against a sealing gasket. The packing rings can be classified into tangential, radial, or pressure breaker rings, as depicted in this figure. You can see that all of these types of rings are made of three segments, which mate each other, so as to form an arrangement similar to what's shown in these examples. The ring segments have grooves which accommodate the spring. The segments are held together by a spring which pressurizes the packing ring against the rotating shaft. As the packing rings wear, the segments are progressively compressed against the shaft thanks to the spring forces. The packing ring is housed in the packing cap as illustrated here. Here you have the process side, the atmospheric side, the packing cap, the packing ring and the spring. Packing caps are placed on the shaft. The number depends on individual unit requirements and the process conditions. The material of construction is usually carbon. The rings are housed in a case which is mounted in a staffing box. These rings fit more closer to the shaft than the labyrinth seals that were discussed in a previous video. And for that, the leakage is well controlled. But a tiny leakage, however, still exists. Let's have a closer look. In this example, the left side of the seal is exposed to process gas pressure. This pushes the packing rings against the packing cap to reinforce the sealing action. However, there is a small entry of process gas from the process side to the atmospheric side through the tiny space between the segments in the rings and the clearance existing between the packing ring and the packing cup as depicted in this simplified animation, with red arrows representing the process gas as it leaks through the seal. The figure that you can see here depicts a standard liquid film floating ring seal. In this figure, the seal assembly consists of a seal cartridge into which are fitted three babbitt lined seal rings and a Niner retaining ring. The cartridge is retained by means of an outer retaining ring. The three babbitt lined seal rings are namely the inner seal ring, the outer seal ring, and the restriction seal ring. The inner and outer seal rings are held apart by compression springs. This maintains the lapid faces of the inner and outer seal rings in contact with the end seal plate and retaining ring respectively. The inner and outer seal rings in the seal depicted here are free to float. For this reason, they are called floating rings and are free to align radially 
to accommodate any shaft vibrations as depicted in this simplified animation. Let's now have a closer look at the liquid film ceiling. This is a zoom on the lower part of the seal, with the process side on the right and the atmospheric side on the left. We will now observe the flow of seal oil and sealing action in the enlarged view of the sealing arrangement. The flow of process gas, which is to be sealed, is restricted by labyrinth teeth and it enters the sealing chamber. But before the entry of process gas, the sealing medium is circulated continuously at a higher pressure than that of the gas being sealed. Most of the sealing oil flows across the seal rings toward the atmospheric side and is then recovered. This oil is called sweet oil. However, as seen here, the oil at higher pressure flows also across the inner seal ring and then restricts the flow of process gas to the atmosphere. The seal oil which comes in contact with the process gas is called sour oil and may be contaminated. This oil is recovered along with the process gas and treated in a separation unit downstream the compressor. The figure that you can see here shows a typical liquid film cone seal. The shaft sleeve and the inner sealing ring have a cone-shaped surface. As discussed in the previous video for floating ring seals, the sealant gets contaminated as it flows past the inner seal and contacts the process gas. When centrifugal force due to shaft rotation acts on the oil, the oil is forced to move outward along the sleeve and inner seal ring from the smaller to larger diameter. Thus, the amount of oil which contacts the process gas and gets contaminated is minimized. The dry gas seal uses the process gas as the working fluid. As the use of other lubricants is avoided, the seals have several advantages. Among them, we can list the following. First, the cost and maintenance of seal oil systems is avoided. Then, for combined oil systems using lube oil as the sealing fluid, problems of removing entrained gas are done away with. The useful life of the lubricating oil is also improved. Then, the cost and difficulty of disposing and replacing contaminated seal oil does not exist. And finally, there is no contamination of the process gas with seal lubricants. Older seal designs extensively used labyrinth or maintenance intensive oil seals for sealing requirements. But with all its advantages, today the preferred choice in the industry is the dry running gas lubricated seal. The design of a gas lubricated mechanical seal, mostly in the form of a cartridge, as depicted here, is very much similar to the conventional mechanical seal. A typical dry gas seal consists of two parts. A spring-loaded stationary seal face sealed by a no-ring and a rotating seat. The rotating and stationary faces act against each other toward providing sealing action. The sealing faces of the seal ring and mating ring maintain each other without contact, resulting in a high level of operational reliability and long useful life. The non-contact gap is maintained by a pressurized buffer gas or process system. 
So let's have a closer look to understand how this system works. The ceiling face of the rotating seat as depicted here has the outer zone machined with pressure increasing aerodynamic grooves. This is where the gas enters. So these grooves compress the incoming gas as the shaft and rotating seat rotates and have to be arranged on the high pressure side of the seal in order to achieve the necessary pumping effect. The buildup of pressure in the sealing gap results in the formation of a stable gas film, as depicted here. This film will not break down even under massive axial loading. And because of this pressure buildup, the ceiling faces are separated from contact and they run with a very fine gap. Now, dry gas seals exist in various arrangements. Single seal, double seal, or tandem seal. The single seal is used for the compressors which have lower sealing pressures and where a small leakage of gas medium can be tolerated. The single seals are particularly advantageous as they occupy less space at the compressor ends and are best suited to keep the lateral critical speeds away. Carbon dioxide compressors used in fertilizers are a classical example where single seals are employed. A double arrangement is a sealing system which reliably prevents product gas escaping to the atmosphere. It involves feeding a buffer gas between the seals at a higher pressure than the product pressure. Part of the buffer gas leakage escapes to the atmosphere side and the other part to the product. Typical applications where product leakage to the atmosphere is not allowed are found mainly in the petrochemical and refining industries. Finally, in the tandem seal arrangement, two single seals are placed in series on the shaft. The seal on the product side and the seal on the atmospheric side are able to absorb the complete pressure difference. In normal operation, the seal on the product side reduces the complete pressure on its own. The space between the seal on the product side and the seal on the atmospheric side leads to a flare. The pressure difference to be sealed by the seal on the atmospheric side corresponds to the flare pressure, resulting therefore in very little leakage to the atmospheric side and to the vent. If the main seal fails, the second seal comes into effect and protects the compressor.